लेक्चर टू डिजिटल इमेज प्रसेसिंग इसी सेवेन जिरो थ्री ए संगीता रॉय असिसटैंट प्रफेसर इलेक्ट्रनिक्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन इंजिनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट नरल इन्स्टिट्यूट अफ टेक्नोलॉजी कन्टेंट डिजिटल इमेजिंग फांडामेंटल्स इमेज फर्मेशन इन ह्यूमैन आई पिक्सल मैथामेटिकल अपारेशन अब डिजिटल इमेज वन पिक्चर इज वर्थ मोर दैन टेन थाउजेंड वर्ड्स एलिमेंट्स अफ भिजुअल परसेपन दिस इज द स्ट्राक्चर अफ द ह्यूमैन आई डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन अफ रड्स एंड कन्स इन द रेटिन इमेज फर्मेशन इन द आई graphical representation of the eye looking at a palm tree point c is the optical center of the lens brightness adaptation and discrimination range of subjective brightness sensation showing a particular adaptation level and it is represented by a graphical representation weber ratio the ratio of increment of illumination to background of illumination is called as weber ratio represented by del i by i where del i is increment of illumination i is background illumination if the ratio del i by i is small then the small percentage of change in intensity is needed and it represents good brightness adaptation whereas if the ratio del i by i is large then large percentage of change in intensity is needed and poor brightness adaptation light and the electromagnetic spectrum wavelength lambda and frequency nu are related by the expression lambda is equal to c by nu where c is the velocity of light in vacuum light and the electromagnetic spectrum this is shown in the figure the electromagnetic spectrum which is shown over there visible spectrum is shown zoomed to facilitate explanation but note that the visible spectrum is rather very narrow portion in the total em spectrum image acquisition basic idea is the capture of image to process the scene basically image acquisition generally the concept in our mind is camera there are three principal sensor arrangements are there single imaging sensor line sensor array sensor image formation model it is a very simple view the five scenes are there rather five pictures are there one is illuminating source that is light or sun that is giving the energy to illuminate any object b is a object that is viewing by camera that is acquisition system and through that acquisition system there is a image plane on which this scene is projected and this projected scene is then quantized or digitized this is a basic form of image model this is the references and thank you so we are now going to discuss human eye structure and how the human eye works human eye is an organ that reacts to the light and allows vision rod and cone cells in the retina allow conscious light this perception and vision including color differentiation and the perception of depth the human eye can differentiate between about 10 million colors and is possibly capable of detecting a single photon the eye is a part of the sensory nervous system similar to the eyes of other mammals the human eyes non image forming photosensitive ganglion cells in the retina and receive light signals which affect adjustment of the size of the pupil regulation and suppression of the 
hormone melatonic and extrainment of the body clock there are two eyes situated on the left and the right of the face they sit in two bony cavities called the orbits which are present in the skulls six extracular muscles attach directly to the eyes to assist with movement the front visible part of the eye is made up of the whitish scale and a colored iris and the pupil a thin layer called the conjunctive sits on the top of this the front part of it is called the anterior segment of the eye the eye is not shaped like a perfect sphere rather it is fused two pieces unit composite of an anterior or front segment and the posterior or the back segment the anterior segment is made up of the cornea iris and lens the cornea is transparent and more curved and is linked to the larger posterior segment composed of the vitreous retina choroid and outer white shell called the sclera the corona is typically about 11.5 mm 0.3 inch in diameter and 0.5 mm or 500 micrometer in thickness near its center the posterior chamber constitute the remaining 5/6 its diameter is typically about 24 mm the cornea and sclera are connected by an area termed as limbus the iris is the pigmented circular structure concentrically surrounded the eye of the center the pupil which appears to be black the size of the pupil which controls the amount of light entering the eye is adjusted by its iris dilator and sphincter muscle light entry energy the eye through the cornea through the pupil and then through the lens the lens shape is changed for near focus and is controlled by the ciliary muscle photons of light falling on the light sensitive cells of the retina are converted into electrical signals that are transmitted to the brain by the optic nerve and interpreted as sight and vision the size of the eye differs among adults by only 1 to 2 mm the eyeball is generally less tall than it is wide the sagittal vertical or height of a human adult eye is approximately 23.7 mm and transverse horizontal diameter or width is 24.2 mm and the axial anterior posterior size depth is average 22 to 24.8 mm with no significant difference between sexes and age groups strong correlation has been found between the transverse diameter and width of the orbit that is r is equal to 0.88 the typical adults i has an anterior to posterior diameter of 24 mm and a volume of 6 cubic centimeters the eyeball grows rapidly increasing from an adult 16 to 70 mm at the time of birth to 22.5 to 23 by 3 years of age by the age of 12 the eye attains its full size approximate field of vision of an individual human eye that is to the point at which one gaze is directly varies by a facial anatomy but it is typically 30 degree superior 45 degree nasal and 100 temporal 
both eyes combined visual fields is 135 degree vertical and 200 degree horizontal when viewed by the viewer indicating the person has peripheral vision possible at that angle about 15 degree temporal and 1.5 degree below the horizontal is the blind spot created by the optical nerve naturally which is roughly 7.5 degree high and 5.5 wide now the dynamic range the retina has a static contrast ratio of 100 is to 1 as soon as the eye moves rapidly to acquire a target it readjusts its exposure by adjusting the iris which adjusts the size of the pupil initial dark adaptive takes place in approximately four seconds of profound uninterrupted darkness full adaptation through adjustment in retina rod photoreceptors is 80 percent complete in 30 minutes the process is non-linear and multifaceted so an interruption by light exposure requires restarting the dark adaptation process over again full adaptation is dependent on good blood flow thus dark adaptation may be hampered by retinal diseases poor vascular circulation and high attitude exposure So this is all about the human eye structure and little bit of how it is behaved. So we are we are going to start the topic what we have covered already that is the structure of human eye then how the image formed in the eye, the detailed study. Already we have discussed that the eye is an optical image formation system. Many parts of the eye show and described on this earlier in the anatomy of the eye. That anatomy plays an important role in the formation of an image on the retina. Corresponding to the image formed as it is shown here in the figure, those parts of the eye that do not take an active part in the formation of an image on the retina have other important functions such as providing mechanical support to the structure of the eye or supplying the tissues with fluids, nutrients, etc. The ray diagram what is showing in the figure can be used that how the object real object is correspond to our eye and forming the image in the retina at the back of the eye but it is showing at the back of the eye the image is formed in the inverted way representation of an object first the object which is presented over there pointing upwards most real objects have complicated shapes, structure and so on. Now this representation which just two clearly defined points on the objects are traced through the eye to the retina. Now the light levels the object propagating in all direction. It is assumed for simplicity that this is a scattering object meaning that the after light in the area reaches the objects it leaves the surface of the object traveling in a wide range of direction means all the spherical direction in all way. Note that a very similar but slightly simpler case would be to consider a light source instead of an object. And to say that the light source radiated light in all directions that would result in the same diagram but would be less realistic because most of the light received by the eye is reflected or scattered from the solid objects rather than coming directly from a source of illuminating 
that is to a lamp, further one should never stare directly at a bright light sources such as the sun, lasers and other powerful light sources because doing so can cause pigment of the eyes or the eye tissues damage permanently because they are very sensitive and delicate. Some of the light leaving the object reaches the eye. Although the object is scattered light in all direction, only a small portion of the light scattered from it reaches the eye. The longer strong the branches of the leaves with the arrow makes along them are called rays. Therefore, the light that is coming from those two parts to our eyes, these are the two extreme points, they are the rays. Rays are shown leaving each point of the object. This simplification is to keep the diagram clear, otherwise it will be clumsy. It is not only restricted to two rays, it is of millions and trillions of rays. But for convenience, it is showing only two rays over there, two extreme points. The idea of this cone of light is represented on the diagram by the area between these two lines. When light traveling away from the object towards the eye, it arrives at the eye, the first surface it reaches the cornea. The ray diagram shows the rays changing direction when they pass through the cornea. That is very important. See clearly the point C. It is the cornea point. When it touches this point, it reverses its direction. This change in direction is due to the refraction from one medium into the another, different medium. Therefore, it is clear there is two different mediums are there over this point. Just to describe this ray diagram, it is sufficient to say that several structures in the eye contribute to image formation by redirecting the light passing through them in such a way as to improve the quality of the image formed on the retina. The parts of the eye responsible for most of the refraction of light passing through the eye are the cornea and the lens. Most of the refraction occurs at the interference between the air outside the eye and the cornea. The lens is important for accommodation or focusing which is also described. Now location of focused images. Generally, ray diagram consists of many rays representing light pass through series of optical components. These typically indicate light leaving an object passing through a series of optical elements formation of the image in the retina. When rays coming from a specific single location on the object, it passes through the same position as each other in the area in which the image is formed. The point at which they intersect corresponds to the same location as the rays left. In the case of two rays coming from the top of this, these two rays showing coming from the lower point and the upper point meet again in the retina. Also we have described that Retina is light sensitive, so it is a light sensitive structure containing photovoltaic cells. This simple example using shows that whenever this ray are coming after confronting this to dissimilar medium, it in the form inverted. Although the image formed on the retina is inverted, the next stage of the visual process is processing by the brain 
which also receives other sources of information about the orientation and the brain ensures that when we understand the information perceived and received after analyzing all the information regarding to that context they senses and coming up with a proper shape and proper position of that image therefore it indicates only the vision is not sufficient to understandable position of an image after all other sensory information coming to the brain it analyze and finally it understand what how and where the image is so if we can summarize it will be like that that when an image is in front of our eye it takes it and these two are the extreme two rays and when it is coming in confronted and these two points are converges to this point this is cornea and is there, there are two dissimilar medium so due to refraction the image will be inverted at this point but though these are inverted but due to some other mechanism inside the brain after analyzing everything the brain gives the signal the proper this upside will be down automatically and it receives as the normal how the image is really it will be inside it will be perceived